Hi, my name is Jake, and I'll be talking about a topic that is perhaps one of the more serious and problematic issues surrounding us in the world today. I'm sure most of you have heard nuclear energy or nuclear waste at some point, but don't exactly know how they work or what they are. Well, today, I will teach you about how nuclear energy can produce radioactive waste and how it can create hazards and danger to us, some more serious than others. Okay, first, what is nuclear energy? Long story short, nuclear energy is a way of creating heat through the process of splitting the nucleus of an atom into smaller parts. This process is also known as nuclear fission. This can be explained by Einstein's famous formula, E equals mc squared, where mass is converted into energy. Nuclear power plants need less fuel than any other methods of generating power. One ton of ura uranium produces more energy than a million tons of coal with several million barrels of oil. Unfortunately, nuclear fission is not 100% efficient, meaning unusable waste products are produced from them. These waste products are what we call radioactive waste. What is radioactive waste and why is it so dangerous? Radioactive waste is formed of radioactive isotopes. Radioactive isotopes, or simply radioisotopes, are any of several species of the same chemical element with different atomic masses. For example, hydrogen has three isotopes with mass numbers 1, 2, and 3. However, only hydrogen 3, or tritium, is a radioactive isotope, the other two being stable. More than 1,000 radioactive isotopes of the various elements are known. Approximately 50 of these are found in nature and the rest are produced artificially as the direct products of nuclear reactions or indirectly as the radioactive descendants of these products. The nuclei of radioisotopes are unstable and disperse excess energy by spontaneously emitting radiation in the form of alpha, beta, and gamma rays. Now we have some basic knowledge, let's talk about the main topic, how nuclear waste is stored, disposed, and managed. In theory, radioactivity diminishes over time, so radioactive waste needs to be isolated for a period of time until it no longer possesses a hazard. The time in which radioactive waste decays into a non-hazardous substance varies depending on its half-life, which is the period of time it takes for a substance undergoing decay to decrease by half of its original amount and its level of radioactivity. Radioactive waste can be categorized into four levels low level, intermediate level, high level, and transuranic waste. Let's talk about what each level of radioactive waste are and how they are treated and disposed of. Low level radioactive waste. They are the weakest in terms of radioactivity out of the four categories. They are generated from hospitals, laboratories, industries, as well as the nuclear fuel cycle. Some examples are paper, rags, tools, clothing, which contain small amounts of most, mostly short-lived radioactivity. It is not dangerous to handle, but must be disposed of more carefully than normal garbage. Usually, it is buried in shallow landfill sites. Worldwide, it comprises of 90% of the volume, but only 1% of the radioactivity of all radioactive waste. An example of a low-life radioactive radionuclide is hydrogen-3, it has a half-life of 12.32 years. Intermediate level waste. They contain higher amounts of radioactivity and may require special shielding. It typically comprises resins, chemical sludge, and reactor components, as well as contaminated materials from reactor decommissioning. Worldwide, it makes up 7% of the volume and 4% of the radioactivity of all waste. It may be solidified in concrete or bitumen for disposal. Generally, short-lived waste is buried, but long-lived waste is disposed of deep underground. An example is cobalt-60 with a half-life of 5.27 years. High-level waste. Produced by nuclear reactors, it contains fission products and transuranic elements generated in the reactive core. It is highly radioactive and often thermally hot. It accounts for over 90% of the total radioactivity produced in the process of nuclear electricity generation. An amount of high-level waste worldwide is currently increasing about 12,000 metric tons each year, which is the equivalent to about 100 double-decker buses. Strontium-90, with a half-life of 29.78 years, and cesium-137, with a half-life of 30.07 years, is an example. Transuranic waste. Transuranic waste is contaminated with alpha-emitting transuranic radionuclides with half-lives greater than 20 years. Elements that have an atomic number greater than uranium are called transuranic, 
beyond uranium. Because of their long half-lives, transuranic waste is disposed more cautiously than either low-level or intermediate-level waste. In the U.S., it arises mainly from weapon production and consists of clothing, tools, rags, residues, debris, and other items contaminated with small amounts of radioactive elements. An example is plutonium-238 with a half-life of 87.8 years. Scientists have come up with the following scenarios of storing and managing radioactive waste. Shallow land burial, engineered disposal vaults, vertical shafts drilled into granite, salt, basalt, or volcanic rock, disposal cavities mined into specific rock formations such as asphalt, deeper earth disposal into the submantle layer, above ground isolation in engineered concrete structures, recycling and reuse of waste material, radionuclide transmutation into non-radioactive material, ocean seabed disposal, ice sheet disposal, isolation disposal on a remote island, and even disposal in space. In Canada, the Government of Canada has put in place a structure of policies, legislation, and responsible organizations that govern the management of radioactive waste in Canada. Nuclear Safety and Control Act Canadian government departments, agencies, and the nuclear industry have clear roles and responsibilities through the Radioactive Waste Policy Framework, 1996 to ensure the safe management of radioactive waste. In Canada, there are 17 nuclear waste management facilities across the nation. Under the framework, waste producers and owners are responsible, also known as the polluter pays principle, for the funding, management, and operation of waste management facilities and other facilities required for their wastes. The policy framework recognizes that long-term management arrangements may be different from the policy framework recognizes that long-term management arrangements may be different for the categories of radioactive waste, especially used in nuclear fuel, low and intermediate level radioactive waste, and uranium mining and milling waste. The operation of Canada's waste management facilities are regulated and monitored by CNSC, Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission, to protect the health, safety, and security of Canadians as well as the environment. The licensing, monitoring, and inspecting of radioactive waste is a vital part of CNSC's mandate. To fulfill its mandate, they handle, manage, and store these wastes in a safe and secure manner. Okay, so, populations and individuals around the world have been affected by the increase of radioactive material in the global ecosystem, cancers, birth defects, genetic damage, lowered immunity to disease. These are only some of the potential effects of nuclear testing, uranium mining, radioactive waste burial, and all the phases of nuclear weapon and nuclear energy production. How do radioactive materials move through the environment to people? Radionuclides can be hazardous to living tissue when they are inside an organism where radiation released can be immediately absorbed. They may also be hazardous when they are outside the organism but close enough for some radiation to be absorbed by the tissue. Radionuclides move through the environment and into the body through many different phases. Radionuclides travel through the environment along the same pathways as other materials. They travel through the air and water, both groundwater and surface water, and through the food chain. Radionuclides may enter the human body by eating or drinking or by inhalation or by absorption through the skin. Packaging and disposal facilities for low-level radioactive waste are designed to minimize the amount of radioactive material entering any of these pathways. Low-level waste is placed in containers to prevent release of radionuclides to the air during transportation and handling and to hold external radiation levels below regulated limits. Low-level radioactive waste disposal facilities must be located away from water. They are also designed to divert water away from the waste and or to collect and remove radionuclides from any water that might come in contact with the waste. This minimizes the amount of radioactive material that might unintentionally be, be released into water. Radioactive material from low-level waste that is not released into air or water cannot enter the food chain or reach people. That concludes my presentation on radioactive waste. Thank you for watching.